Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Life is Love School channel. I'm super excited today to have my good friend Lolita Guarin with me. She is the author of Crush Stress While You Work. I thought it's very timely to invite her because the pandemic is starting to settle down. Many of you are going back to work. And especially for those of us that suffered abuse growing up, I've seen too many of us have trouble dealing with bullies, whether that's at home or at work or in school. So I really wanted to invite Lolita to share her point of view. Hi, Lolita. Hello, you made so happy to be here. Good, great to have you. So Lolita, if you don't mind maybe sharing a little bit of how you got into coaching people uh, and corporations on how to lower stress at work. Well, obviously, it, I didn't wake up one day and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to be stress management coach. <laughs> you know, to be honest, when I go to any networking event and, uh, and I introduce myself as a stress management coach, uh, lots of people say, oh, well, everybody needs you. And uh, I never met a stress management coach, actually another person in the same room. <laughs> Usually they have all kinds of coaches, but not stress management. Um, I think it has to do with a lot of people think that the stress is such a, oh, that's like a natural way of living. Everybody's stressed, not a big deal. Um, and so I obviously didn't start it like, like a, a coach, but um, so I came from Lithuania and here into US, oh my gosh, now 21 years ago. And um, I, I knew that was a land of opportunity for me. And I knew if I will work hard, I will achieve my American dream. And um, so I started an oil and gas uh, company and you know, corporations. But again, um, it doesn't mean that only the corporations bring you stress, right? I mean, you can be in any work environment. You can be working for one person, uh, one boss, one supervisor, and you could be all stressed out and getting sick. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I um, grew, up, grew up with a childhood trauma. I had a narcissistic mother and my father was alcoholic. So I grew up of... Um, people being a people pleaser i was afraid to say no i i was always afraid to be excluded of the group because you know i think i think goes to survival of thinking if i'm going to say no i'm going to be excluded of the group and i'm going to die you know that's how how we think but obviously it doesn't work anymore especially when you grow up but sadly we bring all that childhood trauma with us so what happened to me i i came uh, to us and i was working very hard i had i was working for lunches I was working overtime, weekends. Um, I was afraid to tell no. Like um, I had a few people that will come up with projects for me and they, they you know, would not communicate with each other. And so they don't even know what workload I had. And why, why would they, right? They, they're watching their own stuff. And, and I was so afraid to say that, no guys, I have way too much on my plate right now. So I was just keeping adding on more and more work and I was working more hours. I and on top of that, I'll have other coworkers who come and say, hey, can you help me with this presentation? Or we have an event next week. Can you help me put this together? And again, I was afraid to say no. And I had like zero boundaries. I wanted that people would like me and not exclude me. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do all of this. And since I had no time and when the exercise, I mean, the, like the exercise was when I got up when use the ladies room um, and Obviously, the health was very bad too because when I come back at night after like 10 p.m., I just go directly to sleep and then I eat whatever something in the fridge, some cold food, pizza, donut in the office, whatever. So my health and my stress levels really impacted uh, my health so much that I just collapsed on the kitchen floor and I had to be rushed to the emergency room. And uh, the diagnosis was pretty much, well, you know, it's a, it's a stress. You just run your you know yourself to the ground and and the i was thinking this is impossible because i'm young i mean what are you talking about i mean everybody's you know dealing with stress and i had some of uh, friends and co-workers were telling me like what do you think everybody's dealing with stress what are you what, what do you think you're so special just take some pills and you'll be fine and and that part i didn't like i was like well how is this possible that stress is a normal yes of course stress is a normal way of life i mean even grass is stressing to grow right but it's not dying immediately as soon as it gets to the out of the ground so obviously something as humans doing wrong and I, I i went on this quest how to find natural ways without you know medicating yourself to to find how you can manage all your stress through the day so you don't end up collapsing at the end of it 
And um, I found there's plenty of ways to do it. And I think the stress management should not be stressful. There are plenty of ways that you can do little things all through your day that it helps to level your energy levels so you're not burn out. And then at the end of the day, you can come back home or to your family or, or friends or your dog or whatever who you were coming to that you can enjoy the rest of the evening. You know, like I had clients who come to me and they said, I'm so exhausted. I cannot even play with my kids anymore. I'm so exhausted in my mental state that I cannot write that book anymore that I wanted to do. And it's always, it all comes to how you manage your stress levels all through the day. So then when I, uh, I learned that there's so much we can do and it doesn't have to be so complicated, that's the best part. I just became so passionate of um, teaching this to other people. And of course I applied in my life and it helped. And I. Uh, I had no pills or anything that I had to take. I improved my health. I started taking care of myself. And then I take care of others uh, because I was full of energy and I was not burned out. So then I remember this lady told me in this party, she says, she says look, you know, I, I love what you're teaching. You should be a coach. And then I always thought that coach is something like a swimming coach, <laughs> you know, like something with sports. And But then I became a qualified stress management coach, also a certified life coach. And um, that's how I became a coach. So I'm very passionate about spreading the news that stress management should not be so stressful. And if we just apply a few things through the day and deal with um, not just the bandages, you know, that we say, hey, you know, we just meditate. And it's, it's a more like a bandage on your stress level, which is very good. But you also need to address the wound. Just ask yourself, where is that coming from? And that goes all the way back to our childhood days. So... Stress management is very good, not only on the surface. You need to go all the way down to, to address the issue so you'll be more healthy in the future. So Lolita, I love what everything that you just said, especially the bit about you were an ex-people pleaser because the way that you were raised, you had an alcoholic father, et cetera. It's a very typical kind of childhood background that many of the group members have. So how do you go all the way from a ex-people pleaser to somebody who is able to say no, who is able to set boundaries at work? Well, first, you need to start um, with the changing your point of view about yourself and how, you know, who do you think you are? And the majority of times, you know, children who grow up in a traumatic environment, we don't believe we are worthy of good things and we are worthless. So you kind of feeling even guilty of taking care of yourself and you feeling even guilty of saying, you know, I'm worth more than that. So this is where I need to start of realizing that you are worth more and you are enough the way that you are. And it is very difficult to, you know, to, to break this, especially when I think a lot of our brain works on survival. And it used to be, you know, that when we were living in the tribes and we were in the caves, like, you know, if they, if you don't please others, uh, and they're not happy with you. They will kick you out of that cave and you know, some lion's gonna eat you. And that was very valid. Um, or like, well, if you're not going to be nice to others, then they will not take you hunting and you will die from starvation. And you know, it's, it's been through ages that you know, they can um, you know, kick you out of the castle or they you know, abolish somewhere or whatever, but not anymore. We live in that kind of time right now that we can take care of ourselves. You can go to the store and buy yourself some food, you know? And if you, um, your friends don't like you or your family don't like you, you can go and find some other people. And especially in, we are in the 21st century. I mean, we in, we in pandemic still, and now I can talk to you, you know? I could be in the middle of a desert by myself and still can talk to you. And so first we need to understand time changed. Number two, just because we are afraid that, um, you know, what's going to happen to us if somebody will not be happy with our behavior, we need to say, well, you know, they probably won't die. And another thing what I realized that happened to me, I realized, uh, you know, those people need me too. No, they're just not going to say, you know what, you didn't please me today, and I'm going to kick you out of the house now and never see you again. There are a lot of cases like that that parents do to their children. But um, those cases they come so complicated that uh, not every case is going to be like that. And there's still a, a family unit. And there's, of course, there's some traumas that need to be healed and all of that. But uh, a lot of times we think that we will be excluded of the group and we're gonna die. And that's what we're you know, talking back about the workplace environment. 
what happened to me, I was afraid that if I'm not gonna agree with every single project they're giving me, I'm gonna be fired. Like, no, I have to work all of this. Otherwise I'll be fired. That's mean I'm not gonna have more money. That's mean I'm not gonna be able to feed myself and live in an apartment and, and, and so on and so forth. But I think what, so that's the first step, to realize that you'll work more and it might turn out well. So second step is to start something from very, very small steps, you know, set your little boundaries and start saying no um, to, to things that you don't, don't like. But then you think, okay, so I don't know to say no to what. So that's what you need to come to, to realize what is, that you, what is that you want, you know, like, First, um, write it down the list. And then seriously, I'm asking writing down, just brainstorm and think, okay, let's just talk about relationships. You know, what I don't like about relationships. Because usually if, if somebody says, hey, why don't we go eat for dinner? Where do you wanna go? The first that comes to your mind always what you don't want to eat. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna eat pizza and I'm not gonna eat Thai, I'm not gonna eat sushi. It's like, yeah, I'm asking what you want. That's how we start. If you don't know what you don't want, you will never know what you want. So take a piece of paper and evaluate your life and say, you know what, this is what I don't want. I don't want the relationship somebody to disrespect me. I don't want somebody not giving me love. Uh, in the workplace, what you don't like. I don't like when people give me too much work. I don't like when people you know, cross my boundaries. I don't like when my boss is calling me after 9 p.m. and I have to pick up the phone. So then when you realize that, okay, this is what I don't want. And then create another list and say, this is what I do want. And then again, list all of those attributes that what you want. And then the next step is really to look at it and think, okay, nothing, as we know, nothing is gonna change if you're not gonna make a change, right? So if you're afraid of doing big changes, do a little ones. And let's talk about work environment. Let's say your boss giving you too much work and you keep on doing, keep on doing and kind of burning yourself down like I did. Uh, the first, uh, we need to understand from a, supervisor manager perspective is they want the job to be done and correctly right and with the quality they don't want to go back to the same project because the errors and the mistakes that you may do will cost more money so then when i approached my supervisor and i said i am not capable of doing any more projects i understand that we are thriving for the quality you know this company thrives on the quality Often we pride on the quality and the timely matter of the, you know, giving those projects to our clients. And I said, I have way too much on my plate and I would like to do on time and quality and I cannot do more. And it, it, it took the only that much. And she said, oh, okay. All right, well then I guess we're just gonna, you know, give this to somebody else. And it sounds like you like, actually yeah. have a, a good manager because I was in that situation once and I've actually just had surgery in fact a knee surgery. And I told my boss the same thing. And he actually threatened me. He said, if you don't do this, I don't know if I can promote you. So I think a lot of the work situation is quite complex, right? And a good manager would have said, oh, I understand you always work so much. You always say yes, you always help. I understand that you're having too much on your plate plus the surgery, let's find somebody else. And in that case, I even found somebody who's more than capable and willing to take over. So in those situations, have you ever coached clients that have to face that kind of dilemma? It's either sort of add more to your already bursting play or be retaliated in some way. Um, I, well, it depends on every situation, of course, but uh, I think the, the main thing is that comes to your health and how you feel is that you need to make that boundary and say, okay, I'm going to work only from this time to this time. And you have to be firm on that. Or you need to say, I'm going to be working very hard on this and I'm going to do as much as I can. They told me to do it. I'm going to work as much as I can. After this, I have to take care of myself. Because at the end of the day, uh, usually companies don't care how many how employees are feeling, right? they like, if we go in bank room, we don't care where you're going to find your food now. And um, But if you want to let yourself to be stressed out every day, your health is going to go down the hill and you're the one who's gonna be suffering. So you in any in any situation, you always need to think about yourself first. And that's immediately, I can go into you now, many people put listening, they're like, what? Oh, you're so selfish. Well, listen, you cannot pour out of an empty glass. You can't. 
So, you know, like in the same on a plane, when, you know, something happens, they, you know, the, the, the oxygen mask, you have to give it to yourself so you can help others. Now imagine that if you're not going to put the boundaries and you're not going to communicate with others, uh, all of the stress, you're going to bring it home. And then you burn out, then you, let's say, you have no time for your loved ones. And then, uh, you know, your son comes to you and says, hey, I want to play with you. And you're like, no, I'm, I'm so stressed out. I still need to work. I need to do this. And then you discard your kids because, well, you know, you, you're dealing with this uh, work environment that's still at home, right? You brought it home. And then children grow up thinking, well, you know, my parents don't love me. And that impacts their life so much that they can be unsuccessful and, and, and unhealthy because of the childhood trauma that you just caused that you didn't realize that you caused them. So number one thing you need to realize, I am the number one priority. I have to be healthy. I have to be balanced. So I can create that love environment for others that are important in my life. I mean, you know, I, um, I never had a client that says that the most important person for me is my boss. I mean, maybe there are some feelings involved, but usually the people who are the most uh, important to us that we have feelings with is our family, our friends, our, you know, partners and whoever. So it's, it, it, and I will recommend if you are in some sort of environment that your manager doesn't hear it, then you go upper management. And if they don't hear you, you know what? you think you need to leave that toxic environment. Because if you don't appreciate yourself, they're not gonna appreciate it either. If you're not gonna put the boundaries, they're not gonna do the boundaries either. And I know probably some people listening, they think, well, it's easier for you to say to change the job. Okay, fine. Then, but then do something that makes you happy. Do something very small thing that makes you happy even for five minutes, that you don't feel like you, that they, so, they, they like squeeze the life out of, out of you. Create a, a little a spreadsheet or just put it on a calendar and do some small things through the day that makes you happy. Like watch a funny animal video for 10, 15 minutes. Laughing, it really releases a lot of that stress hormone. It doesn't have to take that long. You know, just close your eyes for one minute every hour and tell yourself, I am not going to work right now. I'm not going to talk with anyone right now. And I'm just going to take that one minute for me. And the, the, the key is to not feel guilty about that. You know, give yourself some little breaks through the day. Give yourself little gifts, little, little treats through the day so you don't feel like you're depleting yourself. And do as much as you can, but don't suck life out of yourself. They can suck life out of you as much as you allow them to. And that's where the boundaries come. And uh, like, you know, we all gonna go back to work and, or even if you start in a new work environment. So the, the first is realizing what are your boundaries are. It's like, okay, for me to perform my job well, I need to be, let's say, working for two hours nonstop, non-interrupted. Then inform everybody that, okay, uh, this is from, from, you know, from nine to 11, this is my time to work and I don't, I don't want to talk with anyone. If you have an office, you close the doors. Uh, if, if you are working in an open environment, which is right now so popular, and this is like the worst that you can do, I think, because people, um, um, so there's so much of um, interruption that you cannot even concentrate. So you can have like, let's say headphones and listen to some music or listen to something that helps you or just don't listen to anything, but just have sound counseling headphones. So you don't hear all that commotion around it. There's some people who thrive in those environments, but that's what you need to ask yourself is this is the environment that they like. Also simple things that you can help yourself for to be less stressed is, for example, ask yourself, am I too cold? Am I too hot? Ladies, especially, and my feet hurt? Because, you know, if you have high heels all day long, you probably they hurt. And then ask yourself, well, do I want to love myself? Yes. Why don't you just get in the slippers under your desk? For example, um, half a day I work with high heels and then I just get in my, like, <laughs> pink bunny slippers and nobody cares. They just laugh. But you know what? I feel better. And that, in, that uh, really helps my energy levels, my stress levels, and then you perform better and everybody's more happier. So always identify you know, what those boundaries are and try to apply it right away. And of course, mm -hmm. you're always gonna have people who's gonna break those boundaries, right? They, they're gonna, you know, even if you have a headphones on, they're gonna come and they pat on your shoulder and like, hey, I have a question, whatever. And, and you know, you can answer, but it once or twice, but if it repeats, then you need to say, um, you know, this is like, the sign. If, if you see me with the headphones, wait until I don't have headphones or, you know, close the door in the office. Or, I mean, you know, any situation is very different. 
but I think the key is also when you identify what it is, start applying it and just try out little steps and see how that works. And the more you apply the boundaries, the more you will see that they work, you'll get more courage of applying more boundaries and you can and you can think, you know what, it's not really, it's really not that bad. All I had to do is tell the people or have the boundaries. And, and it's totally normal, especially if you always feel like, oh, they're gonna look at me in the wrong way, or they're gonna fire me, or they're gonna exclude me and things like that. So the more you actually do it, the more courage you get, the more you see that, no, I'm actually more respected now. And there was a research done that people who have boundaries, especially in the workplace, are getting more promoted and get higher salaries because they are looked at a more quality employees than those who actually don't have boundaries. Yeah, I completely agree with that because people that don't have strong enough boundaries, especially if they're bullies or narcissistic bosses, et cetera, at work, they would literally target you because especially if you are somebody who's perfectionistic, works very hard, wants to please, then they know that you could be a target and they will use that. So it's super important to have strong boundaries, starting by the fact that you recognize my health matters, my family matters my emotional and physical well-being matters. And I think the other thing is, um, if you realize, like you said, a work environment where you communicated your boundaries and it's being ignored, escalated, it's being ignored, then that environment is in fact toxic. And it's no different than being in a toxic romantic relationship. You could communicate your, to your partner all day, but if they don't see a problem, they're perfectly happy doing what they're doing, then your only option is say, what can I do in response to that? Of course you can choose to stay, which you know you, you named a number of really good ways of trying to lower stress while surviving in a toxic environment. And sometimes that's necessary if it's financial, healthcare, et cetera. But in the longer term, I think it's, it's useful to have a plan. So at least you know what your long-term plan is to exit. And that's where people say, you know, I like to have some FU money because that's very important because when you have the freedom, you have another option in the bottom of your heart, you know, that if push comes to shove, I can go. I think that in itself also lowers stress. And I think um, having in any stressful situation, if we just believe that there is a bigger plan, you know, um, I had a, a friend who bought um was about to buy a home right by on the riverbank. And the house was a little older and um, she was saying, well, but we love the location and this house is just, you know, I don't like the rooms and I don't like the furniture because they were buying everything. And she's like, oh, it's so outdated and I don't like this and the plan sucks, but this is right on the river. And they still bought the house and two weeks later the flood came and pretty much got it out. Oh, I love that. They were, it was just only like stud spinning, you know, like in the, all those, that ugly orange sofa she didn't like, it was like on the neighbor's yard, you know, like standing up to that flood. And, uh, and then she was, um, you know, stressing out about it. Oh my gosh, so much work. Now we have to rebuild the home. Now we have to buy all this stuff. And I said, um, but th you hated the house right from the beginning. You didn't like that orange sofa. Now when the universe of God provides you an opportunity to build the way you want it, now you're complaining is too much stress. So I think the, the when the bad things, or what we label as bad things or stressful things happen to you, I think you um, it gives you opportunity to grow. So if you're going through something stressful, let's say at work, and you think, oh my gosh, I'm just not getting along with those people. This is an opportunity saying, let's, listen, listen, get out, get out, do something, do something. I have multiple clients who come like these small business owners and they actually come from the environments that they hated the job because of the people and then whatever, whatever. And they said, you know what? And I was so unhappy that I said, you know what? I cannot take this anymore. And I started my own business and now I'm, I'm successful. And if they would not have all that stress, they will be still comfortably sitting in the same environment and they will not be able now to travel the world and whatever they were doing, what their success is per se. And so I think approaching any situation of thinking, okay, what can I learn from this? Maybe there is a purpose. It's always the darkest before the, the, sun, the sunrise, right? And it, it's hard to you know, go through the situations and, and also, remember the other situations that oh my gosh it didn't happen to me before it's not gonna happen now but you also need to remember that if you're a child that coming already with the trauma it's going to look like yeah like that you're always dark 
but that is not normal. You need to open your eyes and see how other people live. And guess what? You can change it. You can change your life by acknowledging that you need to heal. And it's okay to want more. It's okay to feel that you are worthy. And you need to just, you know, I really love um, Melissa's fear of medication, of medication, a meditation about I am enough. And, you know, you just keep on telling us, you start your day and you say, you know what, I'm enough. You go to sleep and you think I'm enough. And write a list of, of course, your gratitude of saying how wonderful things you have in your life. But also I recommend uh, writing a, a, a list of how good you are. You know, what are your accomplishments are? You know, and the funny thing is um, we don't see things about ourselves that we accomplished or we think, no, nah, I mean, I'm a, I like cooking, but who cares? Everybody can cook. And you can hear your friends saying, no, not everybody can cook. You're an amazing cook. And we're like, ah, that's not a big deal, you know, because it comes to us naturally. So, you know, ask your friends and say, hey, how you can describe me, you know, give me three to five characteristics about me that you admire. And, you know, or even you can be more courageous and say what you don't like about me, you know, then you can, you can address that too. But kind of collect these little letters from your friends, people who really know you. And then when you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make this, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get through this. Listen, you know, read through all of those, and, and, you know, those characteristics about you and, and appreciate yourself because you're enough, you're worthy for more. And if you're in a work environment, you know, go back to that, uh, that, um, core of who you truly are and especially if you work let's say in the environment when you interact a lot with people and they compliment you on your work or like an email like a message something collect them okay so when you feel very low and think you know what that boss sucks because they just mistreated me today you ask yourself well what made my day and you just go into that file and and, and read the comments how people love your work and everything and remember it's you who make your day, you know, don't allow them to come and hijack your day. You are worthy for more and, and you definitely can do it. All it takes is just making a little change. Yeah, I love that because so many of us hyper focus on the little things that didn't go so well or the little criticisms, but we forget about all the accolades we received, all the appreciations that we received, all the good things that we've done for ourselves. I think it, it comes from a background of perhaps suffering trauma right? You could do 10 things right and one thing wrong and the outcome is really bad. Yes. And that's, a, and, and, and that, that's how it is, but you know, it's all really starts from, you just start, you know, where you are and then, and you, you know, where you need to go, because if, if you think that you are trapped, that's really bad because feeling that you're trapped, you put yourself in the box and that's just a very you know, <laughs> silent death <laughs> desperation. And as long as you, um, understanding you can get out and you're worth it to get out, you really can accomplish an interesting way that you want. Yeah, I think you nailed that. That's such an important point because it's the batter women syndrome or the batter spouse syndrome. It happens at work as well. When we see somebody in a power position, in this case, the boss, and if they're threatening or they're narcissistic, they're bullying you to do more, ignoring your boundaries, et cetera, it's very easy to trigger somebody who suffered abuse at a parent who was also in a power position. So all of a sudden we become that child again and the boss is all powerful. We feel like we're trapped. We feel like we have no resources. We feel helpless, just like when we were as a child, but that's just the emotional brain going. So in these moments, like you said, it's very important to call forth our adult self and remind ourselves that this is now, not then. Like all the bad things that we're afraid of happening already happened. I think for me, that was a very powerful awakening to know that you know, a lot of times what we're worried about actually was something that happened in the past. It's just whatever happening now is triggering us to think that we're somehow reliving the past, but it's not true at all. So to remember all the power, all the resources and those options you have in the adult is absolutely critical. Yeah. I agree. And I will go one more step farther and, and say, um, Always remember that we learn from our parents and it goes from one generation to another generation. We learn the behavior from others. And um, I think what helped me a lot that realizing that my parents also were wounded children, you know, and they didn't know how to heal themselves and how to move on. So they did the best they could. And I think realizing that, you know, it's just all about um, forgiving yourself and others. I think that's need to start from there. I really love that because for years I was very angry at my parents because in my mind they should know better. They're older, 
And then I look at them and I realize they never progressed as in physically they got older, but psychologically they never grew. And that allowed me to actually feel grateful for the life that I have because I have all the resources, the books, the, the therapist, the, just the psychological learning and research that I could understand what's going on and actually heal myself. And then now being able to help other people like you are doing that. And it's a very gratifying work that we do. And but not everybody has that opportunity. And, and our well, parents a lot of times are trapped. Exactly. And going to, back to the workplace, it's, um, you can work very stressful job or even be a parent, let's say it's very stressful to take care of your kids and all that and get into little details and think, oh my God, I can't take it anymore. Always step back and look at the bigger picture. You know, like what we just talked, is that who is the bigger picture? And, um, you know, who are you contributing? You know, like you're teaching somebody and you can like say, if you're a parent, you can say, you know, today was a very stressful day. And, oh my God, I can't take this anymore. But I am, you know, I'm trying my best and I'm growing those amazing kids and I want to give them the life that maybe I didn't have. And I wonder they will grow into some happy, healthy individuals that they will, you know, spread the love in the world. But like if you are working in the um, environment that's um, a lot of stress that has to do with a lot of people suffering, you can say, well, you know, I hate to see people in pain today, but um, I'm doing my best to making them feel comfortable and whatever left for them days if you're in a hospital. I, I read the research, there was um, two groups of surgeons that um, they did this research and the one group of surgeons were just sitting and talking about um, how stressed out they feel because they have so many patients that they, you know, like about to die and they die and whatever and they couldn't take this anymore. And then another group, they were talking about um, actually looking at the same thing as of like, well, we have to deal with so many people who are dying and, and it just is unbearable to look at the pain, but we're doing our best to make the last days bearable or at least less, not, less, less painful. And we're helping them and the families. And kind of like just having this a little bit bigger picture of what's your purpose of things that you do. It really puts that your stress level in the lower grade of thinking, you know what? I still can do this because there's a purpose, you know, find your purpose. And even if you have a screaming boss that comes and bullies you, think, you know what? I am the best customer service representative there is. And they love helping those people who call in, you know? And find that purpose. Because when you look at it and you change the perspective about things, you know, things change. Yeah. I love what you just said because you're literally saying let me put myself and my own interests aside and think about how I could bring perhaps more love more motivation more appreciation more good stuff to the world I, I used to do that actually set an intention every day and it's usually I want to bring more love to the world like to the people that I touch so that they feel better about themselves because I think ultimately money no money the company making a little bit more money the company already makes a lot of money Maybe it doesn't matter so much, but how people feel about themselves, especially if you can play a positive um, influence in that, that, that is what really matters. But of course, everybody has to find their own meaning and what kind of floats their boat. But, but yeah, I agree, that really helps. Absolutely. So thank you, Lolita. That was a very enlightening conversation. There's a reason why we clicked the first time we, we spoke. I think to me, um, <laughs> I guess you can list as one of the three. You're somebody that's super inspiring because you went through a lot, right? We were similar in the sense that we're both immigrants, both were raised by not so perfect parents. Um, at the same time, what you took away from this experience is not depression or sadness, et cetera, but you are, you not only pulled yourself out, but you're actually helping people learn how to take care of themselves and live a better life. And that I find extraordinarily empowering. So thank you. I can see the same thing to you. I mean, you're doing the same. You're doing an amazing job by helping others. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.